You are watching. It's on Twitter. I never thought a man hiding under a mask would be found in anything other than the superhero genre. It's a device that is often communicated with a hiding of identity. The 2014 movie Frank can be uplifting and quirky, but I guess it does share a common link with the same characters that don a mask to save the day. Because as warm and welcoming as it tries to be, Frank is surrounded by tragedy. While showing us an oddball band trying to become successful, it aptly conveys the toxicity of when marketing meets talent. Calling attention to the unfair expectations of fame and the far too desperate attempts to be validated. Waves. Endless, rolling waves. Maybe John should write that down. It could make a good lyric for a song. No, it's, it's not good enough. Maybe if he just keeps going at it, he'll come up with something that isn't so. John, as avid a listener as he is, can't seem to translate his enjoyment of music to the actual creation of it. But regardless of how much of a rut he's in, he frequently updates Twitter, hoping that the acknowledgement of followers will give him what he needs to make something more likable. So what John needs is a jump, right? Something exciting to get him off his feet. And like a shooting star of opportunity, a local band needs a new keyboard player. And the new scene is fun for John. It's inviting, even if it is a little wacky. Because John is in need of something new and exciting, aka Frank, the mysterious but admired frontman of the band. So when John is invited to help record their album in Ireland, how could he turn down an offer like that? Keeping active on social media, John documents his number of views and retweets, making sure no step of the art-making process goes unblogged. When John is having trouble writing a song, Frank gives him an example of how you can take anything as minuscule as a frayed carpet and make something beautiful. He plays something truly present in creativity, and John is amazed, like I was, but responds with, People should know about you. You should be famous. Now I think it's unfair to scold John for this response, as he really was moved. But the more I think about it, it really is the wrong response. And I find myself realizing that my initial agreement with John is one stemming from the inseparable connection I subconsciously have between art and fame, talent and success. While I do find enjoyment in the art I create, there has always been the internal motto that if it didn't receive the validation of others, it wasn't good enough for me. And that begs the question, am I really creating something for myself or for the constant desire to be likable? Frank wears a mask because he doesn't like human faces. They're bumpy and weird, but Frank doesn't want to be called weird. He wants to be liked. And while John witnesses the talent in Frank's spontaneity, he can't help but wonder how he is so talented. He must come from a horrible household, an abusive family. How is he so... different? And while the other bandmates take Frank in as something more relatable, John can't make the connection. His ideas are constantly turned down by the band. And after a year has passed perfecting the album, John is no longer the same hopeful blogger he once was. Now bitter and frustrated, he's come to realize that this writing experience has been the torment he's needed to create something real and gifted. But a real shot at creative achievement is interrupted by a big opportunity to play a gig at a musical festival. John can't let the band miss out on a chance to be something big, and as long as he convinces Frank that this is good for them, they're all on the road to Texas to be more likable. While John and the band explore a new environment, John believes that his blogs have let the whole world know who they are. But his naivete misleads the band into thinking that everyone will know them, and Frank takes this reality badly. In fact, Frank has been acting differently ever since he's gotten here, willing to change his sound into something more accessible and letting John take the wheel on the entire creative process. 
Frank's eccentricity has increasingly started to look like crippling anxiety, and his deep desire to be noticed is overwhelmed by the mass amounts of people he's put in front of. And with John leading the way, he's not even expressing the music that he wants others to hear. And in all this catastrophe, it is apparent Frank is not cut out for this at all. What John discovers too late is that the fame he desperately wanted was not worth the cost of breaking everyone up. And there is more of a meaningful pull in camaraderie than unrecognizable recognition. And now John has to suffer his wish. He is famous and everyone knows his name, but only in virality. With nothing else left, a lost John finds his way to Frank in the house he grew up in. And to John's surprise, it looks exactly the same as his own household. While John admits his crucial mistakes, he learns Frank is the way he is because he just is. There was no tragedy or catalyst, but just a boy too afraid to show his face to the world. There's an excerpt from the script that heavily describes John's mindset of the whole movie. And frankly, I'm surprised it was kept out of the final cut. I know what you were getting at downstairs. You were hoping that some thing had unlocked the music in me. Something you never had. But some people have got it and some people have it. That's the truth of it. It's these few lines that give John the answer that he's been avoiding the entire film. A constant search for creativity doesn't result in a big boom of ideas or a sudden sense of purpose. That talent is something nobody can force. And in the moment, Every aspiring artist has to be honest with themselves if they really do have what it takes, regardless of how much they want it. Frank finishes with a bittersweet ending. The band is reunited, but there's no John, as he makes a wise decision to leave something beautiful alone, because even if no one else can see that beauty, it doesn't make it any less amazing. There's a strong commentary on the unneeded assumption that with great art, there comes great success. While it is true that if something truly inspires, it is eventually going to be appreciated by others, it is healthier to view that validation as a consequence of artistic creation rather than a reward. Art is meant to uplift and promote inspiration, not anxiety or self-doubt. And I think Frank really hits the nail on the head with that message. We're always going to try and be a little more likable. It's programmed in our systems. But artists that take a second to appreciate their work as inspiring and motivating is something that cannot be forced, and definitely stronger than any amount of views or retweets. It can be hard to see that sometimes, but even when we fall on our faces and carry more than we can handle, it can allow us to face our fears and never make those same choices again. And I'd like to think that when John leaves that bar in the final scene, he can finally write something that he likes because he has changed in a way that wasn't demanded, but discovered. Thanks for watching.